We, ladies and gentlemen, have the honor of welcoming Ryan here Ryan Christine Massimo Fansa, who will now present the synthesis of the deliberations of the Indigenous Peoples Forum. So, please, you have the floor. Thank you very much. Greetings to everybody. I am an indigenous person from the Amazon in Brazil. So the fifth global meeting of the Indigenous Peoples Forum at IFAD took place on the 2nd, 3rd, 4th and the 15th of February 2021. It was preceded by 14 consultation meetings conducted at the regional and sub-regional levels in Africa, Asia and the Pacific and Latin America and the Caribbean. The consultation meetings saw the involvement of over 540 participants, including representatives of indigenous peoples, organizations, institutions and communities, representatives from IFAD and IFAD funded projects, members of the United Nations Permanent Forum on Indigenous Issues and development partners. The extensive, inclusive and rich dialogue held in the lead up to and during the global meeting is summarized herein. Preamble. Uh, we, indigenous peoples of Africa, Asia and the Pacific, and Latin America and the Caribbean, participating in the fifth global meeting of the Indigenous Peoples Forum at IFAD, whose theme is the value of indigenous food systems, resilience in the context of the COVID-19 pandemic. Recall that our peoples who retain connection to long evolved cultures and patterns of living in local ecosystems have unique traditional food systems that are biodiverse, nutritious, climate resilient and equitable and encouraged in sustainable livelihood practices. Indigenous peoples farming, pastoralism, shifting cultivation, rotational agriculture, fishing, hunting and gathering have ensured the food sovereignty, health and well-being of indigenous communities over generations. These have also contributed to biodiversity conservation and sustainable development for the benefit of all humankind. Nonetheless, our livelihoods and traditional food systems are still not well understood, valued and supported, and our traditional knowledge is fast disappearing. Our holistic approach to resource management, including sustainable food systems, is directly linked to the exercise and protection of the rights to our lands, territories and resources and to self-determination. It is imperative that development actors fully playing their invaluable role in and contributing to sustainable food systems and the protection of the planet. We, indigenous peoples around the globe, remain highly marginalized and discriminated. Our collective survival is being threatened by the widespread grabbing of our lands, territories and resources, forced displacement resulting from extensive extractive industries, infrastructure projects, industrial agriculture and agribusiness, development schemes without indigenous vision, criminalization, increasing poverty and hunger, loss of livelihoods and cultural heritage, increased violence against indigenous women and girls, and rising inequality among others. Imposing the conversion to modern food systems is leading to health problems among indigenous peoples and to malnutrition, biodiversity loss, and environmental degradation. This is aggravated by the adverse impacts of climate change, which is contributing to the depletion of resources and loss of our traditional food systems. As a result, despite five years of working towards the Sustainable Development Goals, SDGs, we indigenous peoples across the globe have not been just, have, uh, have just been uh, left behind, but we have been pushed farther behind and we are affected by major losses in terms of lives and cultures. The COVID-19 pandemic has increased existing vulnerabilities and exacerbated underlying structural inequalities socio-economic marginalization and pervasive discrimination. The pandemic is disproportionately affecting and impacting indigenous communities and posing enormous risk to our physical and cultural existence. 
However, we, indigenous peoples and governments, have a common challenge, which is to establish strategies and plans that integrate the concept of development from the perspective of indigenous peoples. Among the factors reducing our ability to sustain ourselves and fueling the disproportionate impact of the pandemic on our communities are lack of limited lack or limited access to land and natural resources, including clean and safe water, restrictions on the exercise of our sustainable practices, loss of livelihoods and the disruption of local economies, limited access to adequate health and social services, lack of access to information in local languages on how to prevent the spread of COVID-19. The situation of indigenous women, who are often the main providers of food and nutrition to our families, is even more serious. It is against this backdrop that we call on IFAD government development partners and the private sector, including investors, to help change the narrative and to recognize that indigenous food systems hold a treasure of knowledge, experience, values, traditions, and development concepts that, if adequately supported, can contribute to the well-being and health of all humankind. In September 2021, a United Nations Food System Summit will be convened, providing a unique opportunity for global public mobilization and commitments to make food systems inclusive, productive, resilient, and sustainable. Within this context, we urge IFAD, United Nations agencies, governments, and development partners in this context, we urge FIDA, the United Nations Unidas, the governments and the governments to look at us, indigenous peoples, as game changers for more inclusive, sustainable, healthier, and equitable food systems that offer sustainable solutions for developing a more caring and equitable post pandemic world while preserving and safeguarding the health of our planet. The recommendations are as follows. To indigenous people's food, uh, regarding indigenous people's food production systems and the United Nations Food Systems Summit. One, to recognize the value of indigenous people's knowledge, traditional practices and food systems in ensuring the food and nutrition security and food sovereignty of our communities to promote the systematization and dissemination of our knowledge and practices with a focus on women and youth and intergenerational transfer through the creation of knowledge platforms and the use of ICT, research, exchange of knowledge and experience between indigenous people's organizations, including food and culinary fairs, documentation of indigenous recipes and traditional medicine, engagement of partners with the needed capacities to support these processes. Two, to support indigenous people's full, meaningful and effective participation in the planning and organization of the United Nations Food System Summit, including in member states, independent and global summit dialogues to ensure that our voice, views, solutions, and recommendations towards the sustainable transformation of food systems are taken to the summit and integrated in action-oriented global commitments. Three, to support the full recognition and protection of indigenous people's rights to our lands, territories, and resources. This will include support to land de demarcation and titling, water management, and administration systems for human consumption and irrigation of productive lands and indigenous communities and community-based forest protection and management systems. Four, to promote agroecology and organic farming and to recover and strengthen the production of traditional medicines, seeds, crops, livestock, wild food sources, and indigenous food with high nutritional 
additional potential. This will strengthen the food and nutrition sovereignty of indigenous peoples based on our knowledge, traditional practices, and expertise. To rescue native seeds resistant to diseases and climate change, and to support seed exchange programs among indigenous peoples and the creation of local community-based indigenous seed banks. To facilitate the marketing of indigenous products by supporting indigenous community-based enterprises, economic initiatives of indigenous peoples, including sustainable and community-centered ecotourism, and the formal recognition of, of prior participatory guarantee systems and by improving access to market information, infrastructure facilities, and post-harvest technology. We request IFAD to convey the above-mentioned recommendations to the Secretariat of the Food Systems Summit. Regarding IFAD country programs, the recommendations are as follows. One, to ensure the involvement and meaningful full and effective participation of indigenous peoples, including indigenous women and youth, and the indigenous peoples organizations in the design, implementation, and monitoring and evaluation of IFAD strategies and operations through full and effective consultation with indigenous peoples, systematic engagement with indigenous experts in project design, supervision, and evaluation through structured mechanisms for consultation and participation. Effective targeting of indigenous peoples based on our own identified needs and priorities. Capacity building of indigenous peoples organizations of our governance structures. Translation of relevant IFAD documents into national and local indigenous languages. And promoting and facilitating women and youths for social sustainable enterprises. To ensure that such specific indicators on the well-being of indigenous peoples and disaggregated data on indigenous peoples are systematically collected and monitored in the ME systems of IFAD supported projects and programs, and that the participation of indigenous peoples in IFAD's initiatives is assessed through community and evidence-based information at the national and regional level. To ensure that the principle of the free prior and informed consent is fully understood and systematically applied in IFAD-supported interventions, taking into account indigenous people's visions, needs, practices, and self-determining development. The FPIC process should also be properly documented to improve the collaboration between IFAD and indigenous people's representatives at the country level through regular communication and exchange of information, including the regional action plans with IFAD country offices, as this is not happening in the majority of countries. Regarding knowledge generation and sharing on IFAD's operations, we would like to recommend as follows. To continuously document best practices and experiences with IFAD and the Indigenous Peoples Assistance Facility supported interventions with the objective of replicating and scaling up results and impact. To promote knowledge exchanges among Indigenous peoples. To update IFAD's toolkit on engaging with pastoralists, a holistic development approach in order to better reflect the current situation and take into account the present challenges and key issues faced by indigenous peoples in pastoral areas. To prepare a toolkit on the engagement with hunter-gatherer indigenous communities. Regarding IFAD policy on engagement with indigenous peoples, would like to recommend to further disseminate the IFAD policy on engagement with indigenous peoples among IFAD staff, especially newly recruited staff in country offices and implementing partners to ensure that it is well known, understood and fully applied in IFAD operations. To ensure that the updated IFAD policy to be submitted to IFAD's executive board in 2022 is prepared in consultation and partnership with indigenous peoples 
and focuses on the operationalization of the existing policy. To translate and disseminate the policy in national and local lang indigenous languages as a precondition to enable the effective understanding and participation of indigenous peoples in efforts operations. Regarding the 12th replenishment of efforts resources, we'd like to recommend in line with the decisions taken during the consultation on the 12th replenishment of IFAD's resources to reaffirm IFAD's commitment to Indigenous peoples, including by 1. Replenishing and mobilizing additional resources for IPAF, 2. Ensuring the presence of representatives from Indigenous peoples' organizations in the advisory committee of the Enhanced Adaptation for Smallholder Agriculture Program and facilitating access to resources for indigenous peoples under this instrument. Three, ensuring that indigenous peoples can benefit from the rural poor stimulus facility to support our resilience and recovery in the context of the COVID-19 crisis. Four, promoting indigenous people's participation in projects involving financial intermediaries and the private sector. Regarding the indigenous people's forum process and the dialogue with indigenous peoples, we would like to recommend it as follows. To ensure that recommendations from the regional consultations held in 2020 are integrated and reflected in the regional action plans agreed upon with IFAD regional divisions, the plans should be finalized and submitted to the steering committee by 15 March 2021, with financial resources earmarked by IFAD to support their implementation, and to organize within the two-year period between the forum's global meetings at least two consultation meetings in each region with the participation of representatives from Indigenous Peoples' Organizations and IFAD in order to monitor the implementation of the action plan, assess progress, identify obstacles and solutions, and revise priorities as needed. Needed. The first consultation meeting should also focus on the preparation of the updated IFAD policy on engagement with Indigenous peoples. Joint recommendations to IFAD and governments are as follows. To advocate for enhanced engagement and full and effective participation of Indigenous peoples in IFAD-funded projects and programs, particularly in those countries where Indigenous peoples are not recognized by national governments. To support and facilitate policy dialogue at all levels between Indigenous peoples, governments, and the United Nations system on issues of relevance to Indigenous peoples, including access to land territories and natural resources, access to markets for indigenous products, sustainable production systems, conservation and safeguarding of indigenous seeds, technology transfer on agricultural production, transformation and conservation, and promotion and protection of the rights of indigenous peoples. Recommendations to governments are as follows to meaningfully engage in the preparatory activities of the Food Systems Summit and facilitate and ensure the effective participation of Indigenous peoples in member states' dialogues held in preparation for the summit, and to ensure the access and to use ICT for Indigenous peoples to promote our economic activities, including farming, artisanal fisheries and harvesting as key to strengthening the resilience of indigenous food systems. As indigenous peoples, we commit to promoting the coordination of indigenous peoples organizations so as to effectively engage at the country and regional levels with IFAD, governments and the United Nations country teams and other relevant development actors in order to promote and defend our rights well-being and self-determined development with a unified voice. Ensuring stronger networking and communication among indigenous peoples at all levels in order to propose, promote and advocate for sustainable solutions to food insecurity. Strengthening partnership with organizations of 
Afro descendants and to support inclusion of Afro descendants in the LAC region action plan, promoting and facilitating the participation, engagement, and representation of indigenous youth, women, and persons with disabilities at all levels, including in the decision making and steering bodies and structures that are relevant for our organizations. Thank you very much for your kind attention. Thank you.